Hey, you got my porn, my cannibal film. Well, you got your cannibal film into my porn. Nudity was all over the cannibal gore film. You could pay a group of Filipinos to run around half naked, chasing a naked, beautiful Italian actress at a decent cost in those days. And if you really wanted to save money, you could make your way to Thailand, which was closer to Italy. When animal activism started to spike in Europe, these films were too taboo in many European countries, which involved live animals being butchered. If you're going to eat the animal anyways, why not get some great footage out of it, I say. I know that meat in my hamburger did not get on my bun by walking on it. Some places fry their burgers, that's something we don't do. We broil our burgers on a flame, yeah. Man from Deep River is basically an Italian version of the American film called Man Called Horse, a film in the 70s before Dances with Wolves. I guess that is fair to say, you know, one of those films where white people are supposed to learn about the other's culture while at the same time saying to themselves, look how civilized those savages are. The man from Deep River is not bad, is not horribly shot. I really think of it as a man versus man survival film where man has to do what he can to survive, even if it is to adapt to another culture. I know during this time, Americans were making Star Wars, but Italians were making porn for England and Germany who love that stuff, and maybe they got to our beloved 42nd Street every once in a while. Even before the bigger budgeted cannibal films, a little film that could call Emmanuel became the craze over Europe and then came the Black Emmanuel series. What makes the series of Black Emmanuel so great is that they were filmed in exotic places like Thailand or Turkey or hey, the Amazon. Laura Gossmer is one of the most gorgeous people who ever walked on the face of the earth. Black Emmanuel series involved high production music recording, wonderful quality filming, and they explored every fetish known to man. See Emmanuel in America if you do not believe me. In the series of Black Emmanuel, Emmanuel would explore bondage and other taboos, so why not the cannibal fetish? The year was 1977, and the film would grace the shelf along with the VHS cannibal films of the 80s. And believe me, it holds up right along with them. I'm going to say it, that Cannibal Holocaust is the greatest European cannibal chunk gore movie out there. I'll start with the soundtrack, which still gets stuck in my head, in which a good music soundtrack is supposed to do. Although a child of the 80s is thinking, why is this a soundtrack? When I have time, I will tell you. It was the highest grossing horror found footage film of the 80s. Take that, Blair Witch. It was an actually found footage film that was actually good, so take that again, Blair Witch. You sit on a throne of lies. The film still stirs the imagination of any filmmaker on conceiving why Diodato got away with making the controversial film. I definitely would recommend this film to the not so easily offended. Whether filmmakers tried to capitalize the success of Cannibal Holocaust, many just tanked because the Cannibal Holocaust ripoffs were more of the freaks of cinema. You know, filmmakers wanted to see how far they could push the buttons of censors before getting banned, and they thought they could make the next Cannibal Holocaust. Cannibal Frogs shows where the spike of the Cannibal War films were going. The movie Cannibal Frogs lacks the emotional connection with the audience that Cannibal Holocaust had. They saw the violence of Cannibal Holocaust and really not the story of the film. Frox is probably one of the better attempts of the Cannibal Holocaust ripoffs. Just Franco's attempt. You have to love Franco's honesty. He said he did the Cannibal films for the money. I did the cannibal films for the money. Massacre in Dinosaur Valley. One thing that kept the cannibal war film genre around for a long time was the popularity of Indiana Jones. Massacre in Dinosaur Valley could be counted as an Indiana Jones cash grab. It has an adventurer like Indiana Jones running through the unknowns of the jungles fighting cannibals instead of Nazis. Either way, I had to throw it in because the star of Devilfish was in it. Video and X-rated theaters helped make the makers of these films rich. But if you could get one great story out of it, is it really worth it? You tell me in the comments below. Were these films made to be good or were they made to take the money off the ones who would pay the money to see things they would not be able to see in real life? Subscribe, like, and share right here on the Coconut Dating Channel. Who's your daddy? If I were in New York right now, I'd probably be out shopping. Be the envy of your friends. Wear the sexy cosplay t-shirt. Wear it on a podcast. Wear it to convention. It's comfortable. Heck, even sleep in it. Your girlfriend will love it. You will love it. Click on the link below and get your sexy cosplay t-shirt shipped to you.